My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Well, I am uh, Dr. Emily Letran. I'm tuning in from right here in Southern California. And, awesome, uh, awesome. I, <laughs> That's <and> fantastic. I'm, <laughs> I am a high performance coach, a um, speaker, business consultant, dentist, and best mom in the world. Awesome, awesome. So let's dive into the entrepreneurship and business growth. Absolutely. I know there's a lot of uh, lot of challenges that are going on currently right now. Um, I feel like it's divided into two segments. Uh, some sectors are having growth. Some sectors are stagnating, and they're trying to see how they could pivot. As an entrepreneur, what are a couple of your recommendations for individuals at this moment, how to deal with the circumstances that we're going through? Well, you know, in every challenge there's always an opportunity. Uh, first of all, you, you want to always be looking for opportunity. Uh, sometimes the opportunity is very obvious and sometimes it's not. Sometimes, but, but you got to keep looking for it. I always say um, that when you want to pivot your business, right? The first thing is you have to know yourself. Uh, what is that supposed to mean? Well, you need to know your values. Uh, I'm sure you might have be in a, a Facebook group and people start talking about, should I change career, you know? Should I find something else to do because I'm not essential, <laughs> whatever it is that people are calling, right? Your particular business. Well, I think you will never ask yourself those questions if you are clear what you're all about, right? If, if you love what you do and you right. understand why you get into a certain profession or a certain career, there gotta be a lot of reasons for that. So you don't just hit a pandemic and say, that's it, I'm throwing in the towel. So you know yourself first, you know your value. Again, that go back to, if I know, you know, this is my standard, this is my ethics, I'm not gonna go and change and do things a different way. And, and I'm sure you've seen, like, I'm in the healthcare industry besides the coaching. And at this point, there's a lot of price gouging, right? With, you know, the PPEs, the masks and everything. And for me, it's, this is not the time to do that. I understand in general, the economy is, you know, supply and demand. But when you're talking about healthcare, you're talking, you're talking about taking care of humans, right? You're taking care of somebody's health. I find that to be, you know, I'm challenged by that as far as ethics is concerned, um, meaning I don't like it, right? So if you know yourself well, you hold your ground, okay? The second thing is when you're in this kind of situation and you don't take care of yourself, I know a lot of people say, oh yeah, I have the opportunity. I'm going to go, I'm just going to stay home, I'm asleep or whatever. Well, we're talking about taking care of your energy. And that means physical energy, emotional energy, and intellectual energy, right? You, you, right. Could, be, you could be watching Netflix, or maybe you take an online course. Or maybe you have a conversation with your coach, your mentor, friends in a mastermind group, right? Um, since you can't go out, you can do you know, your virtual coffee or whatever, right in front of the computer, right in front of the phone, and you make the most time out of it. But you gotta take care of yourself. And it's not, you know, the people who are right now saying, okay, I'm gonna kick back, I'm gonna take care of myself. Those are probably the same people who have not been taking care of themselves. So it's regardless of whether or not there's a pandemic, they just weren't taking care of themselves. And those are usually the ones that got hit really hard with stress, right? They're, they, they're gonna go and rely on I don't know, medication, coffee, something to, 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 to keep themselves up versus somebody like me or probably like you where we watch our energy and during the day, we try to recharge our energy. Um, with your, with your, last, your last guest, you were talking about meditation. Um, right. and, and I understand not a lot of people know about meditation. Sometimes you don't even have to call it meditation, right? You, you can call it, you know, I need you to take a mental break. What does that mean? Well, go sit in the corner, close your eyes, and take some deep breathing. You know, because when you say, sometimes you introduce a big word, let's say to the younger people, they go, I don't need to meditate. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm not an old person, right? <laughs> or I'm not in that particular category. So sometimes it's the way you present things to get people to, to buy into the idea, right? And I, and I think in, in, in a time of crisis like this, you know yourself well, you take care of yourself well, and you plan strategies. 
you plan strategies on when you come back, whether or not you can go full force. Um, some people have the business like a brick and mortar business only, right? So what do you do for several weeks that you're shut down or you're still shut down kind of like us in LA County? Well, then you plan, what are the five things you're gonna do when you come back? Um, maybe you, right now, you send out emails to your customers. Uh, if you don't have the email list, maybe you send out snail mail to your customers, right? You, you keep in touch with your customers and your clients. And like in, in my case, with my patients, so that way, they're not going to forget you. I mean, it's not like they're going to forget you, but they're, they're you know, they, they haven't seen you for so many weeks. Maybe you had to reschedule their appointments. And when they come back, they want you to be ready. And are, are you ready? So, so take the time to plan because, you know, it's funny, just because we have time doesn't mean we're going to do, we're going to do what we're supposed to do, right? right. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen that, that funny post on Facebook that say, you know, I, have, I haven't had a chance to clean out my garage or whatever. And two weeks into the pandemic, I realized that that was not the reason, right? <laughs> because you just didn't want to do it. You, you did not want to tell yourself, no, I got to clean this up or I need to focus on this. So a lot of it has to do with knowing exactly what you want. And then you only doing the activities that will, will get you to those results, right? Whether you have... I mean, everybody have 24 hours, but whether you have more time because you're forced to, because you can't work, or whether you have less time, the number of things that you try to do in a day may change, but your goal doesn't change. If you have more time and you could accelerate certain things right now, take advantage of that and, and go for it. And once you come back full swing work, if you don't give your time, yourself the time to, to recharge, to relax, to meditate, deep breathing, exercise, whatever you do, um, if you don't visit your values and know exactly where you stand. I don't care if there's a pandemic, you're always going to be under stress. You're always going to be dealing with uncertainty. And it's just because you don't know yourself well. Exactly. I agree with that. 100%. How do I start to get to know what my values are and who I am? What, what, what are some of the techniques that I could, or what are some of the steps that I might need to be taking? I think the very first thing is probably read some books. Right. And in this day and age, unfortunately, people don't want to read. Sometimes they don't want, you know, they don't really want to read. But some of the books you could read, for example, Think and Grow Rich. Um, it's, you know, it's one of those books that I had the, the privilege of reading many, many years ago and and understanding, you know, how to grow and, and not just as a person, but also like if you involve in business and then um, you know, so some of our motivators out there, like Tony Robbins, you can read Awaken the Giant Within, right? It's asking those value questions. But I think the fastest one is to work with a mentor or a coach. So for example, for um, as a high performance coach, my, my first two sessions is just asking those value questions. And I'm not going to say what are the top values, you know, in your life. Not like that. But I, I could be asking you something like, if there's one thing that you want to do in your life, what would that be, right? And, and in order for you to answer that question, and I'm just giving it as an example, right? But in order for you to answer that question, you have to ask yourself, well, do I want to do what I want to do right now, <laughs> right? And, now what, and then if you say, no, okay, no, I want to um, be a, uh, uh, you know, doing real estate, for example, then the question would be, well, why do you want to do real estate? Like, why, are you, why aren't you doing it right now? So there are follow-up questions that asks you so that you be clear in what's most important to you. Because sometimes people say, I want to do real estate. And then you keep asking them and it turns out, oh, it's because I want to be home with my kids, right? And so then it turns out that the value for you is family and spending time with family. And if you're in a position where you work, what's in conflict with that, you're always going to be, you know, unhappy in, in a way. You're always looking for something else. So are there ways that you can restructure it where you can go to work and you can still be with the family or when you get home the moment you get home you're going to be a hundred percent with the family you're going to save that energy to talk to your spouse to talk to your kids and i don't i don't care if it's just dumb conversation passing time but just being there right i i, I work with some clients and they say well i leave work at six i get home at seven we eat dinner and at nine o'clock my kids have to go to sleep right and so I don't have any time to spend with my kids. So then my next question to them is, do you think 
maybe two hour, five days, you can get out an hour earlier. I mean, I don't know, but you're, you're, you're the boss. You know, you can get out an hour earlier. If you tell me that your family is that important, well, then make that decision. Leave an hour earlier. So you have an extra hour there. On the weekend, instead of planning, whatever you're planning to do, um, involve the family, involve the kids. One of my clients said, well, you know, I'm cooking, you know, on the weekend, I got to cook. And I say, okay, well, then why don't you make your kids cook with you? And she go, what do you mean? I say, well, yeah, <laughs> like, my kids, if they were little, I'll tell them, okay, pick the, you, you, you know, we, uh, we Asians, we eat a lot of mints, right? Like different leaves. So I just tell them, you're plucking the leaves. I don't really care which way they pluck the leaves per se, right? I just want them to be involved. Mommy's here. Which is very important at an early age, them being involved. Those are social skills and life skills that they need to be learning that right. it's invaluable. Right, right. But see, you don't, you want to be intentional about that. Meaning, oh, I just need to give my kids chore. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, you tell me that you want to be involved more with your family, that you want to spend more time with your kids. Well, then look at the activities that you do. Is there any one of them where you can get the kids involved? Right? And that's being intentional. Rather than just, okay, I gotta do this. When I'm done with this, I'm gonna go play with the kids. No, maybe the kids can help you. I have, um, when my kids were smaller, I mean, they go to the office and I still remember, I make them file charts, right? Paper charts. And they didn't even, they didn't even read very well, because little people. So, and you know, when you label the charts with color, I tell them, just file by the color, right? Number one is orange. You put all the orange and all the blue. And at four, three, four years old, they were coming to the office a little bit in the afternoon. That's what they do. Just get them, get it, get them involved. And and for me, when when you say, see, for for a lot of us, what sometimes what we stress about is misalignment. Meaning, you say that that's what's important, but your actions is like, is, you're right, is not matching. So if you say family is important, what do you do to be engaged with the family? right? How much time do you give your family? Um, if you say business growth is important, do you spend the time studying marketing? Do you um, try to figure everything out yourself and do everything yourself? Because that's not really very smart, right? Or do you get somebody to show you the road, show you some strategies and make it, you know, make it grow faster? Because if you actually say you care about growth and you're going to work with somebody, or, or, you know, to to help you accelerate, right? You, you don't do 5% growth. You want to do 10, 15% or whatever. So a lot of that, when, when I'm coaching, you, you ask me, how do I, how do people understand the values? When you ask them the hard questions, but the right questions, where they have to think about it and they have to kind of come to term with themselves, <laughs> whether, whether that's actually their values. Um, I think that's, I think that's where the magic happened. And, and, for starters, maybe you're reading, maybe you could be reading a biography of, of a leader, right? And and you pick out certain certain values or, or certain stories resonate with you. And if those things stay with you, they are probably part of your values. A lot of people can just tell you, I, if I ask what the values are, they'll just randomly say certain things. But when you ask them, okay, so let's say your value say is love, right? What do you do to always, you know, create the love, give the love, show the love, and they don't have anything in particular. And, um, and that's, where, that, that's why when somebody is working with you and they're pulling that out of you and you understand yourself better, you can, you, you're just gonna save yourself a lot of time and you can fast track your high performance, your business performance, and, and grow your family. It gives you a lot of clarity when you know who you are so right. now you can go after it. And I think when you know who you are, you stay more authentic. Yeah. And it just comes, it resonates a lot more with more people that share the same values. It might be five people on the planet that share the same value, but then it will resonate with those five. You don't have to resonate to everybody. Right. And, and when you say authentic, one of the things we, we um, coach our clients on is being a role model. Right? And well, why do you want to be a role model? Well, you want to be able to influence other people. That's part of being a high performer. When you, when you call yourself a role model, all of a sudden, 
You're going to walk a little straighter, right? <laughs> You're going to watch what you say. You're going to watch what you write. And it's not watching to be perfect. It's watching to say, hey, I say I'm a role model. Maybe that 10 people reading my posts or whatever. I want to make sure that those 10 people actually see me for who I am. And um, that's why I, I, I applaud a lot of people who may be doing, you know, a Facebook Live or, or they writing things and they putting it out there as long as it in alignment with them, right? Uh, because as people read you, as people learn about you, they expect you to be a certain way. And if you're authentic, you will be that certain way. You don't have to try to be authentic, right? And when you actually deviate sometimes, people understand. They know that sometimes you screw up. Like, like for me, I have my dental practices. Uh, it's about 24 years, right? And so like, if this is the way I run the practice and today I screwed up. And I just tell the patient, well, I'm sorry today, whatever, you know, the lab didn't bring you a case and we don't have it here, we reschedule you. Tell me, okay, fine, I'll come back, right? Because they know the other 95% of the time, you live up to that. And that's just being being authentic, being you, right? Um, we, 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 we make fun of our patients, like we, we like to have a lot of fun, right? We make sarcastic jokes. Um, we put funny pictures on the wall. I tell you, I have some funny, like funny plaques on the wall. For example, I'm sure you've seen the one that say, uh, I can only please one person per day. Right. Uh, right? Today is not your day. Tomorrow doesn't look good either, right? So I have that thing on the wall. And of course, we're a dental office, so customer service, whatever. But there, there are people who actually come in and sit and look. And then they say, you know, your signs offend me. <laughs> and... And I'll be like, okay, well, maybe this is not the office for you. You know, because the whole idea of those signs is so that when people come in, they already know this office is a little different. This dentist is probably a little goofy, right? Or she has a sarcastic sense of humor. And and that could put you at ease. Or like that other patient did, you know, offended her. The majority of the people come in, they start taking pictures of all the you know, the, well, the plaques, right? And they go, oh, yeah, I've been taking pictures of your plaques. And I go, okay, it's 50 cents per, per picture, right? And they, just, and they just laugh about it. But the whole idea is you let them know who you are, right? Because yes, I could be the one to tell you exactly that quote and mean it, <laughs> you know? So, so be, because that's just me. That's just me making those kind of jokes. So being authentic is something that I think is developed inside of you when you know yourself, right? When you know yourself and you're comfortable with yourself, it's going to be very easy to be authentic. But if you don't, if you're still trying to figure out, if you're trying to look like John Smith or whoever, right? Because that that person is a, is a business owner and, you know, very successful. And you try to look like that person or act like that person. It's okay as long as that person and you have similar values. But it's not okay when you don't have the same values. And at some point, I think you're going to be confused. You're going to be, okay, do I keep going? <laughs> or or right, do, I, right. do I figure out myself? That's what I think is important for you to have a coach or a mentor or someone that could guide you through the, throughout that process. So tell us this. How do people find you? How do people find me? Well, you know, they can find me online. Um, they, can find, they can find me on Instagram. He is, it's uh, Coach Emily Letran. I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, and they can go to my uh, website is americandreamcoach.com. Um, I have online trainings, virtual trainings on there. I have online courses. Um, I also put on events called Action to Win, and we teach business acceleration. We teach- Yeah, high, I, I've high, seen that. Yeah, high performance strategies. And uh, you know, my, my thing, when people ask me, one of my goals is to get rid of whiners, right? And they go, yeah, right. And I say, no, seriously. <laughs> I, I think when you know yourself and you always try to do your best and and you you know you excel you just not, you're not gonna keep you know you're not gonna care about the whiners you know what I mean the, the people who right. don't want, who don't want to work at it or you're gonna turn around and you're gonna try to get them to be a better person like you right so if everybody just get a little bit better life is gonna be a little better for just just for all of us and um, when I say whiner, sometimes whining is not taking responsibility, right? right. Um, it, in a way, I mean, you can whine about the pandemic, but there's only so much you can control. 
besides whatever you cannot control, then just deal with it yourself. You, I, I don't need your whining or your complaint to deal with when I have my own issues, right? And a lot of people, when they complain, especially verbally, publicly, um, they're just looking for company to, to you know, to grab. I think, as, I think as an entrepreneur, you shouldn't be giving excuses and you shouldn't be taking excuses. I think that's just flat out basic understanding of entrepreneurship. So I totally agree with that 100% that they got to do that. No, but once we edit the video, we'll make sure that the links are there so they could find you on your events. I saw some of the stuff, so it's fantastic. Thank you so much You're for welcome. taking this time and being here this morning with us. Hopefully we get to do more because some of the topics that you touched up, we definitely need to elaborate more. So okay. hopefully the team could reach out and we could do some videos. Meanwhile, if there's anything that you need from us, let us know. Glad to be uh, at, at service and help you out throughout this whole process. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for providing the platform so we can come on and uh, share our strategies. Definitely, thank you so much. Okay. Talk to you thank soon. You. Bye -bye. Bye. Thank you, bye-bye.